Well, I just want to welcome everyone in here to Embrace at all of our campuses. We're thrilled that you're here. My name is Adam. I'm one of the pastors here, and as always, just overjoyed that you've decided to come and worship today. Just one thing before we get started. First off, uh, two Saturdays from today, two Saturdays from today, we have a men's event taking place. And fellas, I'm just saying it is going to be awesome. You will not want to miss the men's event. We have unlimited chicken wings, which is awesome in itself. At our St. Croix campus, they're going to have a hog. They're going to roast a hog. I just picture like shovels and burying a large boar in the ground or something. There's going to be a root beer keg. We also have one of the greatest current speakers right now in our country, a guy named Perry Noble. Perry is going to come and he's going to share about some of the mistakes he's made, some of the public mistakes he's made this past year, the past couple of years, and about how God offers us second chances. Guys, I promise you, this this will be a powerful event and you will also have a blast. The last men's event we took that we did, I laughed and laughed and laughed. Honestly, it was powerful and then ended up crying somehow as well. It was fantastic. So guys, if it, you're at a campus today and you are a dude, I want to challenge you to buy a ticket. Tickets are 15 bucks. That just covers the cost. Honestly, that's worth the chicken wings in itself. So it's $15. Get your ticket after the service and then get a ticket for a buddy of yours as well. 30 bucks total. Get two tickets. Tickets, go buy a ticket for yourself, get one for your buddy. So that's for the fellas. Ladies, I just want to say this to you as well. I cannot say it strongly enough. Get the men in your life to this event. No kidding. Get your dad, your brother, your boyfriend, your, your husband, whoever it is. This is the kind of thing that the, you want the men in your life going to. Honestly, use every chip you have, every ounce of influence with your husband that you have, use it. Cancel his plans if he has them. No kidding, I would force my husband to go. Ladies, if you're looking for some words to use, say this. Dear man, if you want to make me happy, you will go to this event. Can I make this, you know, men need it really, really simple. Dear man, Hugh man, like if you want to make me happy, go and do this. I honestly, like just am praying that God will change a whole bunch of lives through this. And, and why I'm so passionate to the ladies in the room, because at all of our campuses, we constantly get prayer requests. My, my husband is struggling with this. My dad is struggling with this. My boyfriend is doing this and this and this and this. And I do not know what I can do. Here's just a quick thing. Ladies, this is something you can do, honestly. Your husband may not go to a counselor. He may not do this or this. Get him to this event. He's going to have a blast. And, and Lord willing, God is going to work in some lives and change it, all right? I think I said that as strongly as I can. All right. Last week, uh, I started off by confessing and sharing one of the worst parenting moments of my life, a moment that took place two weekends ago when I tried to start a campfire and provide s'mores and just a family moment for us as a Weber family. Uh, it, well, it didn't go so great. Uh, after using some lighter fluid and lighter gel, the fire still wouldn't burn. And so as a last resort to save my fatherhood, I ended up grabbing a large red gas tank and it ended up in some of the largest freaking flames I've ever seen in my life. And I didn't just see these flames, I actually felt these flames. You know, they were so close. I'm like, oh my goodness, I felt, I, I felt that, okay? And then I started the gas can on fire and somehow I lit all the grass on fire and it was, it was, it was terrible. My, the worst part still, I get flashbacks as, from it is my kids running into my neighbor's yard, running dads on fire, saying dads on fire, dads on fire, dads on fire. My kids will most likely have nightmares for the rest of their life. But this week I needed to learn some more things about fire for this, this, this Sunday and this message. So I searched fire on Google and it might've been a sign from God along with my wife praying for me to get a clue uh, because the very first thing that came in the search, no kidding, the very first thing that came up was Smokey, <laughs> Smokey the Bear's webpage. I didn't even know Smokey the Bear had a webpage. It's SmokeyBear.com if any dads need to check it out. But the page, it was all about campfire safety. And after reading it, I just was enlightened to a whole bunch of things that as one of your shepherds, I thought it would just be helpful for me to pass on that godly insight with all of you. Like one of the things that I learned is that it's good to keep kids away from fire, which is good to know. I never really knew that. That's a good thing to know as a dad. Uh, Smokey informed me that it's good to keep the campfire small and under control. I was like, gosh, I wish I would have read this a couple of weeks ago, you know? And then probably the best thing for me to, to read was in the list of don'ts. I think it's like things you shouldn't do 
I'm not sure, but it, anyway, Smokey said, don't use any flammable liquids to start a campfire. <laughs> and I'm not positive, but I'm sure that includes large red tanks of gasoline, right? Now, if you weren't with us last week, though, right now we're in a series, and we're talking about fire. And just to be clear, we're not talking about a physical fire, but instead we're talking about the fire that is able to take place within us, the fire that exists within the heart. And just in general, we actually talk about this kind of fire fairly often. I mean, when a person talks about their marriage, they might mention that the spark that they once had is now gone. I mean, we used to be so crazy about each other, and now we just kind of drive each other crazy. Amen in the house of God. Okay, we have some liars. Or when someone talks about their job or their hobby, they might mention that the flame or the passion for the job, it's just not there anymore. And what used to get them fired up is no longer, and their job has just become their job. And when it comes to life as a whole, it just kind of feels like life itself and the purpose and the passion that was once there. It just feels like the fire that they used to have inside them has grown cold and it is just gone. And today, maybe today, that's exactly where you're at right now. You just look and you're just like, man, the fire and the purpose and the passion that I once had is just not, not there anymore in my, in my marriage, in my job, in my life as a whole. And so again, for this series, we're talking about fire, but so much more than talking about a possible fire that might be in a relationship or with a job or in your life. In this series, we're talking about what does it look like to have our hearts set on fire when it comes to God? What does it look like to have our heart on fire when it comes to Him? That's our focus. That's the center of this series. And last week, we mentioned that fire is all throughout the Bible, like it's everywhere. If you missed the message from last week, go and listen to it on iTunes. But from Moses to the early church to Jesus returning, fire is talked about. And as we said, more than anything else in the Bible, what fire symbolizes is God's presence. It symbolizes the very presence of God. And so with Moses and the burning bush that day, in this fire, God was there. God was with him. Moses, he was there. He was present. And so when we talk about our heart being on fire... What we're saying is that God is present within us, that he's inside of us. He is present in here. And when this happens, get this, we begin to want and we begin to crave more and more of God in our lives. When our heart is on fire, our love and our passion for Jesus grows. And we just want more of his love. We just want more of his joy. We just want more of his truth. We just want more and more of God in our lives. And from the inside out, the Lord begins to change us. And like a fire, this love and this passion for God, it just begins to grow and it just spreads and grows and spreads some more. And so last week we talked about how to start a fire and about the conditions of our heart that are good for starting a fire when it comes to God. But continuing on today, today we're going we're gonna to talk about how do we keep the fire going? How do we keep it going? I mean, more than just getting it started, how do we keep the fire inside us going for the long haul? Not for a few days or a few weeks or a few months, but for years. Again, how do we keep the fire going? How do we keep the fire burning and burning and burning within our soul? Now, just being honest, as a pastor, one of the hardest things to see is a person's heart being set on fire, only to see that same fire grow cold and burn out. I mean, truly, one of the hardest things to see is a person get excited about Jesus and they're a new Christian and they're on fire for God and they're growing and they're growing and they're growing and they get baptized and you can just see that fire burning only to see that same fire grow cold and go out. I mean, it truly tears me up inside. Like as a pastor, this is something that I lose sleep over. Or on the flip side, to see someone who's faithfully followed Jesus for years, possibly decades, they've loved the Lord through highs and lows only at some point to see their fire go out and they end up completely walking away from God and church and everything else. And to put it lightly, it brings me to my knees. I mean, every time I see it, it leaves me completely heartbroken. But get this, there's one other instance that tears up the heart of God, not my heart. It tears up the heart of God possibly even more. Possibly even more. You see, in the book of Revelation, Jesus is writing this letter to this one specific church. And listen to what he says. Jesus, through John, says this. He says, I know all the things that you do. You are neither hot nor cold. I wish that you were one or the other. But since you are like lukewarm water, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. 
intense, right? Again, Jesus is right into this church in this specific city, which just so happens to be one of the richest and most educated cities at this time in the world. And basically, for the most part, life is good and life is comfortable for these people and there's not much of a real need for God. Sound familiar? And here is Jesus and he's challenging them. Why? Because when it comes to their walk with God, when it comes to their fire, they are neither hot nor cold. They're just kind of there. You know, like they, they follow Jesus, but they're just kind of coasting. And there's not really much of a deep love and a passion for God, and their lives aren't being changed, and they're not really doing much of anything. And so Jesus is challenging them to get off the fence. And Jesus is just saying to either set your heart ablaze, either set your heart on fire, or being honest, just put it out completely. That's pretty direct, right? And this is from Jesus. I mean, either get your fire burning or don't. Either let your fire burn or just put it out. Don't do it halfway. It'd be better just to put out the fire as a whole. Again, intense, right? And I got to believe that I'm not the only one who this hits fairly close to home with. And so once more, it's, it's one thing to start a fire, but how do we keep the fire burning? How do we keep the fire going and going and going? How do we set our heart ablaze? And this week, all I could picture was what a really good campfire looks like. This is one of those campfires that just seems like it could burn and burn and burn forever. It's one of those fires that you try to put out at night before you go to sleep, and you do your hardest to do that, but you wake up, and the fire, guess what? It's still burning. That's a good fire. And so I just wonder, how do we have a fire like that inside of us for Jesus? How do we have a fire like that, that even when you try to put it out, it just burns hotter? And to answer this, let's go back to Smokey the Bear. You see, this week in my extensive research, it was extensive, I found out that there are three different elements. I feel like a teacher on a subject I should not be teaching on. There are three different elements that are needed for keeping a fire going. They call it the fire triangle. So you learn something new. And what are the three elements? You need oxygen, you need heat, and you need fuel. Again, to keep a physical fire going, you need these three things. And when it comes to God, the elements are maybe different, but we also need three different things to keep our heart on fire as well. I mean, we need, like it's required, we need three different things to keep our fire going. And just to be as original as I possibly could be, this week I decided to call it the fire triangle. <laughs> Anyways, no, but seriously though, so when it comes to God, what's the first element that's needed to keep our fire burning? The first element that we need is time with God. It's quite simple, but it's not easy. Time with God. Faithful, inconsistent time with God. Time opening up the Bible and reading it. Time and talking with God and listening to him in prayer. Regular, inconsistent time worshiping God and not doing so in a check-the-box legalistic sort of way, but instead in intentionally growing our love for Jesus by just being with him. And to get really practical, if you're like, I'm not really sure where to start when I read the Bible. At all of our campuses today at the Info Center, there's a 30-day reading plan. If you're just like, I don't know where to start, there's a simple 30-day reading plan. It's free. Go and grab one. And if you want to learn more about prayer, I'm just guessing that someone has written a book on prayer. It probably wasn't a very good book on prayer, but it is written. And with worship, it's just about making it a priority. And not just showing up for worship on Sundays, but singing out and engaging in the service as a whole. Again, these are some practical words, but more than anything, each day it's just acknowledging God and inviting him in into more and more of who we are. As we said last week, inviting God's presence into our lives, inviting his fire and his presence into who we are. And just to ask the question, I just want to ask, and it might be awkward for some of us, but are we spending time with God? At all of our campuses, are we spending time with Jesus? Like, are we? I mean, really, are we spending time just with the Lord? And just a quick note with this, I cannot stress the faithful and consistent time with God enough. And just being up front, faithful and consistent are not fun words, right? They are not fun. They are not sexy. And in this day and age, we try and run as far and as fast as we possibly can from faithful and consistent. But what's at the basis of any good relationship, marriage, family, friendships, two words, faithful and consistent. I mean, it's choosing to show up when you don't want to. It's choosing to love someone when the feelings are gone. 
And hopefully we have those firework moments. Hopefully we have those mountaintop moments with God where there's that one song where we get all excited and our flame goes high, but they're not the basis of your fire. Instead, they just add to it. Again, faithful and consistent. It's choosing to listen to God instead of doing what we want. Choosing to make Jesus a priority in our schedule, in our plans, our decisions, in our lives. Choosing to open up the Bible choosing to just be with God on our busiest of days, getting our butt to church, but realizing that it's so much more than just one hour on a Sunday. Once again, want to keep our fire for God going, want to grow our love and our passion for Jesus, want to set your heart ablaze, faithful and consistent time with God. So that's the first element to keep our fire burning. It's the first thing that we need. And then the second element that is needed is community. Not, not too fancy, right? Community. It's time with others. Specifically with other people who love us and they love Jesus. People who just by being with them, our love for God, it grows. People who love you enough to show up and at times just listen. People who love you enough to speak the hard truth. People who love you and are just there to pray for you more than anything. People who love you and they point you back to Jesus when you desperately need to be pointed back to Jesus. In the book of Acts, the early church was known by its importance of community. In in Acts 2, we're told that they got together and they talked about Jesus. They got together and they shared meals together. They got together and they prayed together. And I don't know about you, but I long for this in my life. I long for this in my life, but just being up front to have this, it takes living out another non-fun word. If we want community, it takes living out another non-fun word. What does it take? It takes commitment. It takes commitment. Showing up. Being there. Not flaking out. Making it a priority. This is one of the things that never ceases to blow me away. We want community, right? We complain all over Facebook that we don't have anybody. We're so lonely. We we want community. We want other people in our lives. But I honestly do not think we do. Why? Because we constantly flake out and we don't show up to anything. Myself included. Here's the truth, though. If we want to grow in our love for Jesus, if we want our fire to burn and burn and burn, we need it. We need community in our lives. Here at Embrace, we have nothing figured out. If you've been here for longer than a service, you know that we have nothing figured out. I can say that we are trying more things in the history of our church than ever before to get people connected. After services at some of our campuses, we have something called a post 30. It's 30 minutes where there's something fun to do and it's just a chance to mingle and connect with people. We're encouraging people to open up their backyards, to invite people over and spend some time with a campfire and s'mores. Be careful with a campfire and s'mores and maybe just having some worship in the backyard. A couple of months back, the Sertoma campus played the T campus in softball, and it sounds like the T the campus just completely dominated the Sertoma campus. Actually, Sertoma only lost by one point, and Sertoma, if you're listening, uh, don't feel too bad because knowing Travis Waltner and the T campus, they most likely probably cheated. And so, uh, <laughs> just to say that, no, seriously. We're trying all kinds of things, though. But the number one thing that we've been, been saying since the very start of Embrace, it's the number one thing that we, we, we do is small groups. And right now, this time is the perfect time to check out a small group. So we're we're starting up small groups left and right. It's the perfect time. And I pray that if Embrace has been your home for seven weeks or it's been your home for seven years, that you would get connected. Truly being a part of a church family, there's nothing better. But it takes commitment and it takes stepping out of your comfort zone. And so today, if nothing else, if you were nothing else, when you came in at all of our campuses, you should have been given one of these small groups card. I just encourage you to fill it out and get more information. It doesn't sign you up for anything. You don't have to give us your firstborn child. It just gets you more information about small groups. But just so you know, we have couples groups, young adults groups, men's groups, women's groups, morning groups, evening groups, literally hundreds of different groups. And I'm praying that we would get connected. When it comes to putting out a fire, My very first thing that I always do when it comes to putting out a campfire, I know that if I spread out the wood, at some point the fire will go out. Even before hosing it down, I'm like, if I can just get the wood spread out, I know that come morning, the fire will be gone. And the same is true about keeping our heart on fire. The same is true. Again, if we want to keep it burning, if we want to keep the fire inside us growing and growing and growing for God, we need community. 
So that's the second element to keep our fire burning. And then lastly, the third element that we need is to do something. What is it? Do something. Come again? Do something. And part of keeping our fire burning for God is actually living out our walk with Jesus. As followers of Christ, our faith is active. It moves us. It challenges us to step out of our comfort zone, to make changes in our lives, to boldly follow Jesus. And each time we take a step out, our fire, it grows. Each time we trust God, it grows. Each hard decision we make, each time we say, yes, Jesus, I trust you, our fire, it burns and it burns and it burns. And so from the last series, maybe it's stepping out and it's sharing our story with someone. Today, maybe it's stepping out and it's checking out a small group. Maybe you've been a part of a small group and you know that you should be leading a small group. Maybe it's tithing for the first time. It's like, I love Jesus, I love Jesus. I even got bumper stickers all over about Jesus, except when it comes to my checkbook. It's like, no, nah, I'm not gonna really put Jesus on that. Maybe it's looking into foster parenting. Maybe it's having a hard conversation with the person you're dating. Maybe in church, in a church service, it's raising your hands for the first time. Maybe it's applying for a job. Maybe it's loving our crazy neighbor. Or it's loving someone who's so different from us instead of hating them. Maybe it's just saying yes to God when he clearly tells us to do something. Again, the more we say yes to Jesus each and every time with big things and with small things, our fire, it burns and burns and burns. Again, we need, like it's required as followers of Christ to do something. And hear this, if our relationship with Jesus hasn't changed us, if our relationship with Jesus doesn't make us uncomfortable on a regular basis, if our relationship with Jesus has not led us to action, we might want to make sure that we're actually following Jesus because I'd argue off those things that you're, we're most likely not. Again, the, the third element that we need to keep our fire burning is to do something. So now once more, these are the three elements that we need to keep this fire going, right? But back to Smokey the Bear, as I was reading through SmokeyBear.com, here's what honestly struck me. I mean, looking at the fire triangle, we need these three elements, right? But what struck me, I'm a very simple man, what struck me is that the moment you take just one of the three things away, the fire goes out. It's like so obvious, right? But is it really? Like the moment you just take out one, but there's still two. The moment you just take one of these elements out, again, I'm talking about physical fire, the fire dies. Switching back to us, though, again, we need all three things, right? And so get this, if we have a bunch of do something and we have community, I mean, maybe we're a go-getter or we have a heart for serving and maybe justice, but we have no time with God, hear this, the fire, it will go out. Or if you have lots of time with God and you have community, and you'd say that you're a really deep Christian and you're really deep and you love studying about God and you're really deep and you love theology, but you never really do anything, again, hear this, the fire, it will go out. It'll vanish, but I have two, it'll go out. Or if you have time with God and you have lots of do something, but you're just busy and and you're spread out, and you have zero community, and honestly, you're not really sure that you need community. I mean, have you seen my time with God? Like, you know, you know, I don't really know if I need it. One last time, the fire will go out. It will vanish. Like nothing there, not even coals. It will go out. But once again, if we want our fire to keep burning, if we want to grow our love and our passion for Jesus, more than anything, if we want to set our heart on fire we just want our soul to grow and burn and burn and burn and grow we need all three things right so with this i just want to ask today and i'm asking myself as well what area or areas do you need to grow in which are the three areas do you need some attention Maybe it's a little of all three. You just look at it and you're like, man, I need to work on all three. Or maybe there's one that's your strong suit, but the other two are kind of falling behind and you've convinced yourself they're not really necessary. But actually, they are. Maybe you're good at two, but there's just one. What are the areas that need some attention today? I pray for all of us, myself included, whatever area it is, that today we'd make a decision. We just actively pursue. It's like, God, I want this fire to burn. And no, I've been wondering why it's not been working very well. There's one area I pray that we just pursue it. We just run after it. And as a result, our fire would grow inside of us. 
closing things up today, I just want to go back to Jesus' words one more time in, in Revelation. Again, he's writing this letter through John to this one specific church, and here's what he says. He says, I know all the things that you do, that you are neither hot nor cold. I wish that you were one or the other. But since you are like lukewarm water, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. Again, strong words, right? We, we mentioned those. But a few verses later, listen to what Jesus says. He gets to the why. Like, he says this, and he, then he explains himself why. Verse 19, he says, I correct and I discipline who? Everyone I love. So be diligent and turn from your indifference. Be diligent. It can also translate, be zealous, which can more fully translate, let your heart burn. Set your heart and your passion for God on fire. And then continuing on, these are some classic verses. Jesus says this, and just to be clear, he's not writing to unbelievers, he's writing to Christians. He's writing to the church, he says this, look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and we will share a meal together as friends. Again, some of the strongest words from Jesus either set your heart ablaze, either set your heart on fire, or maybe just put it out. Maybe just put it out. Honestly, that's so crazy. Maybe today it's like, just put it out. Like you just decide you're just gonna put it out. But then, again, why does Jesus say this? Why, why do I correct you? Because I love you. I only say this because I love you. I love you so much, so be diligent, have zeal, burn with passion, grow your love for me, set your heart on fire. In the meantime, even if you don't hear this, I'm just gonna stand at the door of your heart and I'm just gonna keep knocking. Set your heart on fire, but I'm Jesus, but I'm just gonna stand here. I'm just gonna keep knocking. I'm just gonna keep knocking because I love you. I'm just gonna keep knocking set your heart on fire but in the meantime i'm just going to keep knocking why because i love you and when you open the door get this i'm not going to beat you over the head i'm not going to tell you how long i've been standing outside here instead when you open the door i will come and we will share a meal together as friends that's awesome one last time it's one thing to start a fire it's another thing to keep our fire burning let's pray gracious lord we come before you just needy for you, desperate for you, Jesus. God, today the desire of our heart is that you'd, you'd set something on fire within us, maybe for the first time, or that you'd rekindle a fire that's maybe been there, but it's just kind of been off and flickering here and there. God, whatever those, those, those areas are that need attention, whatever those three areas are, God, that we just, we just need some attention, I pray that you'd give us the courage to address it, the courage to make some changes, God, either set a heart on fire or put it out. And why do you say this? Because you love us so much. You're just such a good father. You just love us. God, we thank you. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen.